Well, good morning and welcome to our ARC Sunday service. It's a thrill to be able to broadcast this to you and thank you for logging on. Um, there's been lots going on this week. We've had uh, kids going back to school. So if you've gone back to school, we really hope that you've had a fantastic week back. And maybe this is your first time ever in school. And if, if you're at that stage, then I hope you've had loads and loads of fun. We've got guys going back to university. And, um, and so lots of things going on there. And in fact, very sadly, we're going to be losing one of our valued team members as Ellie's going to university on Monday. And um, for those that don't know, Ellie has been doing the bulk of our video editing as well as being on camera and, and all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna sorely miss Ellie, not just because we love her, but because she's been really useful to us over these months. Um, so Ellie, there she is. Um, turn around, give the camera a wave. We just wanna thank you so much and pray God's richest blessing on you as you go back. Uh, so well done, thank you. And, um, and indeed, as I say, to anyone that's going to university, maybe for the first time or, or you're going back, we wish you the, the richest blessing and uh, pray that you'll be safe, kept safe and uh, enjoy your studies in a quite a different environment at this time. We just want to say, uh, if you've been logging on and maybe you haven't been involved with the church before, maybe you started to look at what we're doing or other churches are doing just over this period of time, or you might have been to church uh, and would just like to know a bit more about the Christian faith, then we're going to be running a, a very well-known course called the Alpha Course, and we're going to be doing that online. It's going to start at the end of September, and we want to encourage you. It's a, it's a great course to just unpack the Christian faith in a very non-threatening, easy way. And so check out our website. If you would like to be involved with that and sign up for that course, then there'll be more details on our website. And our website will be actually, the, the, the website address will be at the end of our preach, right at the end of our service. That will be on the screen as well. So do get in contact with us if you would like to sign up to that. Um, we just again wanted to say that we are praying as a leadership how and when um, we can kind of get, start doing stuff again in this building, face-to-face -face meetings. Clearly, the government advice changed this week. It changed for us. It changed yesterday because I'm recording this on Thursday. So Wednesday, the Prime Minister adjusted some things. And, and it's our heart's desire to honour the government, honour what we're being asked to do, and to obviously adhere to, to, the, to the law. But also, we want to um, we want to do all we can to, at the right time as we pray and seek God, right time, get a chance to start meeting together in various different formats. So please continue to pray for wisdom as we seek God on that, but be assured that that is um, what we're doing at the moment. And so uh, we'll keep you informed on that one. And um, just again, wanted to say that today we have got uh, um, Abby, Abby Dennis leading our worship time with Mark and the team and that's wonderful. We've already recorded that so I was treated to being involved with listening to Abby and joining in with Abby leading worship. It's a fantastic time so I pray that would bless you. And then George is going to bring God's word to us later and so we just want to commit that to the Lord now. So should we pray? Father we just want to thank you as I say for the opportunity to to um, bring this service online and we just ask that wherever people are at, Father, that they would be impacted by your presence and by your word today and that they would be able to join in with our worship from their homes and would really be blessed by that and would bless your heart as we lift your name on high. And um, as George brings God's word to us, we pray that, uh, Lord, you would inspire it, you would anoint it, that we might be, uh, we might be attentive to what he's saying and what you're saying through him today. So we commit this time to you. And Father, we do want to pray for everyone that's watching this or a member of our church. And we just ask again for your protection over them. Lord, that you would comfort those that need comforting. Lord, that I thank you that you share the joys of those that are going through good times and you walk with us through difficult times. So we just commit our congregation to you again, Father, and ask for your covering and your blessing to be upon everyone who's watching this at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Impossible. 
Speak a 
Well, good morning to you and uh, thank you so much for joining us today on our online service. Um, my name is George and um, uh, it's great to have you with us if you're, if you're not regular and if you're part of our church family. Uh, we extend to you our love and our, our greetings to you as well um, at this time. Uh, first of all, just on a, a personal note, um, I just wanted to say a quick thank you uh, for those that have um, sent cards and gifts and all sorts over the last few weeks. We've Jess and I have uh, just had a, a baby girl, Amelia, and um, she's doing really well. But we're just incredibly grateful for uh, our church family surrounding us and um, cooking us meals and, and doing all sorts. So thank you so much. Uh, it means a lot to us to know we've got a church family around us that can support us and help us. And uh, we look forward to the day that we can bring uh, Romelia here to church and um, introduce her to you all. And uh, it'll be a great day. She's doing really well. She's healthy. Um, we had a bit of a um, uh, there's a bit of a headache with the weight uh, in the sense of the birth weight was wrong. Um, which we didn't realize till a few days after um, we had got home. Uh, but she's healthy. It's all okay. Uh, we think she's around seven something, but we don't know for sure. Uh, but Jess is doing well. And uh, she had a cesarean. Uh, the baby was breached. Um, and uh, so she's recovering well. And um, yeah, so thank you so much for your prayers at this time. It feels strange, really, with we as a family, we've come into a, re- a new season and uh, adjusting to, to a newborn and uh, it's, it's all very exciting. Um, but over the last few months, really, I've, I've been really thinking a lot about seasons and um, how kind of God works in different seasons and does stuff in, uh, in different seasons and feel like as much as personally, I feel like we've, as me and Jess, we've stepped into a new season, I feel like God is He's asking us to step into a, a new season and he's wanting to do a new thing personally in our lives um, and feel like God's got more in store for us and um, not necessarily stepping away from COVID because, of course, you, you'd have seen on the news this week that it's still very much um, here and it's it's still around. But I believe God's saying to to us is, is to step into a new thing and uh, he wants to do a new thing in our lives individually spiritually um, and uh, <clears throat> it's there for us uh, and uh, he's, he's kind of calling us out to, to do that and to move into the new thing that he has for us and I think it's a uh, it's a new season of of a personal revelation that God wants to pour out on us it's a, it's a new thing that he wants to uh, do in, in our lives in Isaiah 43, 19, this verse, it gets quoted quite a lot in prophecies and preachers. Uh, but for me, just kind of as I was preparing just on my heart, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And this message was from the prophet Isaiah for the, pe- for the Israelites after they come out of exile, giving them hope. And although this week I feel like these kind of new cases that are kind of coming through and, and the rise of cases uh, that God is, I believe that God would want you to know that there is hope in him, that he's wanting for us to step into a new thing in him. Over lockdown, we, Jess and I, we moved into our, our house in West Row and um, for, we were thankful enough to move in around kind of March time, just before we had the the real lock kind of lockdown on us. And we've had many projects in our house that we've had to kind of see to more than we kind of hoped for. But one of the projects uh, that we've been working on is our garden. And uh, we've, we had a, we, the last few years we were in a, in a flat. So it's really refreshing having a, gar- having a garden, especially during COVID. Uh, but when we, when we first saw the property, um, the garden it was just in a mess like it, it wasn't in a good state at all the there was just covered in stinging nettles and they kind of they came up to waist height it was they were really long and when we, when we moved in um the guy that had bought the property or sorry he owned the property before us um, arranged for gardeners to basically just take the nettles down and so when we moved in um it was basically just stinging nettles but of course they were cut so it was lower and it was almost just stripped bare as such as you, you'll see in this photo now. And actually, um, we 
it was there were more roots than I thought there would be with stinging nettles. I don't know if you've ever dug up stinging nettle roots, uh, but it is hard work. And there is there was more than I expected. I started my garden fork, and I I quickly gave up. And I so I got a rotavator and I went over uh, the the soil with a rotavator, bringing up the roots and taking up the roots that just weren't good. And um, we spent a, a good day on it. We we put tarpaulin down afterwards because we wanted we didn't really know what to do with the garden at that point. We just wanted the stinging nettles out because we have we have a dog, so we put tarpaulin over it so um, they wouldn't just get muddy. And um, and we just we kind of pondered on what to do with it. And then we put some turf down. So we put some grass down uh, with the help with the help of uh, Barry and Sharon, and they helped us put some turf down. And it looks great. It looks really good. Um, we had to of course water it maintain it uh, we had to um do we still need to look after it now of course um but it's looking so much better than what it was before and for me i feel like our garden project as it were it still needs a lot doing um but our garden project sums up the kind of the past season and the season we're going into in the sense of i really feel that god has used covid as a time for us to declutter, to, to dig up the roots. Um, you know, over lockdown, so many people have kind of cleared out their houses. It's kind of a, a season to kind of clear out the stuff that kind of, that maybe we didn't know was there, um, but because of COVID, it's stuff's kind of come to light. And I feel like God is, is saying, the season's gone where, it, where I, want, I want you just to kind of remove stuff. Tim spoke a lot last week about being refined. Um, and uh, there's, there's some things, habits and um, sin can creep into our lives without us knowing. And it's time to kind of, I believe that it kind of the last few months have been a time to, to take up the roots, to dig up the roots. And it's time to put down the new turf. It's time to root ourselves in him because he wants to do a new thing. And so if I was to give um, this preacher title this morning, um, it would be rooting yourself in Christ. And there are three areas that I want us to look at what it means for us to root ourselves in Christ. Uh, three areas that I think that for me have been, uh, uh, that have been personal to me, challenges to me, uh, but I feel like are, are really important. And the three areas are identity, dependency, and intimacy. Identity, dependency, and intimacy. And this morning, we're not gonna necessarily look at a one passage um, uh, and kind of take it apart for me. I just feel I felt drawn to to take different passages where Jesus is involved in and in teaching and demonstrating uh, how we should be living, and in these different areas of identity, dependency, and intimacy, we're going to look at different passages. So we're going to look at identity first, um, and uh, we're going to jump to Luke ten thirty eight forty two. So if you have your Bibles with you, um, why don't you open them? If not, the words will uh, come up on the screen. And we're going to uh, read the account of uh, Mary and Martha. So verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her, her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. This passage, this story of Mary Martha, I spoke about it in a welcome a few months ago, that this passage for me, um, God's been teaching me loads through this, and I've kind of grabbed a hold of this kind of through lockdown. Um, and I kind of feel like in this in the story that Martha kind of gets a bad reputation, uh, that she's kind of almost known as, as the bad person. Whereas a reader, I think actually her priorities were wrong, but what she was doing was right. And so... When Jesus says to Martha, um, you know, Mary's doing the right thing, he's not saying to Martha, you shouldn't serve at all. If anything, there's scriptures and, and the passage is very clear that actually that God wants us to serve him. That is a part of our, uh, being a Christian, that it's important to, to serve um, and to love him. But I think there's a few statements that Jesus makes by what he says to Martha by saying, you know what, Mary's doing the right thing by sitting at my feet. One 
I think the Lord is saying that actually the ser- serving comes from a place of a love, from love of the Lord. And um, serving is an act of worship. And if, if, if that means if we are not serving out of a place of love for the Lord, then actually to God, it doesn't mean much. So I think that God was saying to, to Martha, actually your priorities need to be to sit at my feet and from that, serve from that place. But I also think that the story of Mary, Martha and Jesus teaches us about where we find our identity, especially in the area of serving. At the start of lockdown, um, well, as, as when we closed the doors and Paul said, uh, we need to, I feel like God's saying we need to shut the doors of the church. Uh, this was before the government came out and said that churches need to do so. And uh, we were kind of brainstorming on what we do on a Sunday. How do we um, get kind of preach and worship into homes? And we, we looked at live streaming and we looked at all sorts and uh, we decided the best thing to do was to pre-record in the week and then pop it up on the Sunday uh, for people to watch. And uh, I think it's been r- really good. And um, at the start, we we I was involved in one week of it. Uh, myself, Ellie and Tim, we, we kind of got involved and we were um, we did a worship and preach. It was good. There was stuff, of course, to work on. And, and um, But after that week, after the first week we had done our first online service, um, I was at home and, and um, Jess gave me a call and said, hey, uh, so, someone in my office has been in contact um, with someone that has um, COVID symptoms. So I've been sent home. I've been told I need to isolate. And because I felt that Jess had to isolate because I live with her, I felt that I had to isolate as well. And um, I wasn't involved in the recording of stuff for a couple of weeks. And I, su- I was surprised actually how hard I found it not being involved. Um, especially of course with with Sundays not not happening um and it's not that my attitude was wrong i think it's good when we miss church it's good when we miss serving but i had to ask myself some questions of where where do i place my identity because it was at a point where because i wasn't involved i felt a bit lost i was still working from home but i didn't quite know what to do with myself um to a point where I had to ask, is my identity and what I was serving in or was my de- identity in Christ? And actually, I think we're at a point where COVID has stripped things bare to what we have to ask ourselves those kind of questions that actually um, I was I was reminded of, I thought about that question about our identity because um, on my course that, I, that I'd been on, um, there was a guy that was talking about serving and he said, sometimes people can find their identity and they serve when, their identity and what they serve in so when that's taken away they really struggle and um it's cha- it's really challenging for me and it's something that i had to really kind of sort through god and still is something that i need to sort through and actually we can find that we put our identity in different areas in our life where christ is to put 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 your identity in him and if you were to ask um the world or uh, people what kind of makes their identity i think they would probably list a few things potentially like their names, uh, what has been said over them, maybe their age, their jobs, um, what they do five days a week, their past um, uh, struggles, possibly they might find their identity in things they've done in the past. Um, whereas I think God, he almost just turns on the head and says, um, although those things, they, they, they make up our personality, they, they make us who we are, and they're, they're the two of our passions, like our jobs sometimes for some people are to do with our passions. Um, but he says that actually identity should be in him. And if you, if I want to say to you, if you've had something called over your life uh, that has stuck with you to a point um, where you struggle with it, something negative, uh, I want to say to you that God, that's not what God says about you. Um, you are not a failure. You are not a mistake. Uh, you are beautiful in the eyes of God and he, you are a child of God. And uh, what stuff people might have said stuff over you, uh, that, that is not your identity. Um, your identity is in him. If someone has said to you that you're too young or too old to, to do a certain thing, don't be defined by your, your age. In 1 Timothy 4.12, um, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. And if you're on the other spectrum and you're more kind of senior age, um, Moses was 80 when he led the Israelites out of Egypt. 
and our jobs that we that we do of course are so important to us they're five uh, five days a week or whatever we work um they're important to us they bring our income in but god has the ultimate calling over your life he has the most best purpose for your life and satan he has a he has a field day of letting you know what you've done wrong and he will try and root your he will try and root what you've done wrong um into you to a point where you find actually that you can't be anything more because of what you've done whereas god says you are free that you are forgiven and uh, that you are a new creation being rooted in christ means we find our identity in him and we have to root our identity in christ and when we do that we also find our security in him too so our first root that i want to talk about is identity the second is dependency and so we're going to jump to john 6 um uh, a well-known passage uh, let's read this together some time after this jesus crossed to the far shore of the sea of galilee that is the sea of tiberius and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick then jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down with his disciples the jewish passover festival was near when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for all these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. People answered him, sorry, Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon's Peter, Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed those who were seated as much as they wanted. Uh, he did the same with the fish. When they all had enough to eat, he said to the, his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with pieces of five barley loaves uh, left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw uh, the sign Jesus had performed, they began to say, surely this prophet, surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. For me, this passage, it speaks about a dependency on God um, that we can uh, learn from. The crowd's that had witnessed Jesus doing amazing things uh, were surrounding Jesus and his disciples. And um, I get the impression that Philip was really kind of overwhelmed by kind of what was happening. And um, those crowds uh, can resemble many things in our lives today, I think, that we can feel overwhelmed by. So, for example, it could be um, that you're in a, a really difficult work situation at the moment maybe because of just different things that are happening or covid or you've just kind of you've watched the news this week and you just feel just kind of even more kind of overwhelmed by covid or maybe you've you you know of someone that's facing them or are facing a massive health situation and you feel overwhelmed by it and there's times i think in lives where we can find ourselves overwhelmed by a situation and we try to do it in our in our own strength when Jesus says to Philip, um, well, what, how are we going to feed all these people? His, Philip's answered, response is this. This is verse 7. Philip answered him, it will take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each to have a bite. Philip's first reaction is to think about what he could do, not about what God could do. We are sometimes independent humans who like to do things our own way in our own strength. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's been a verse Jess and I <laughs> have been holding on to the last few weeks. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But the verse says we can do all things through Christ. It's not we can do all things on our own. The simple truth is that God is asking us to depend on him more and more, to hand the five loaves and the two fishes to him. And when we do that, we see God move in ways that we would have never imagined. And sometimes we can be faced with a situation where we feel overwhelmed, uh, like Philip was, and we can kind of think about, well, what can we do in our, own, in our own way? And the first reaction should be, 
what is God wanting to do in this instant? What is God wanting to do? And even this preach, I, 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 every time I, I'm involved in something or worship or preach, my prayer is, Lord, would you just, would you take my five loaves and two fishes? Will you, would you take them? Because I can't do it on my own. I can't, I can't, um, I can't do it in my own strength. I need you. I need, I need your Holy Spirit to help me in, in, in the areas that we might face. And sometimes God just, he wants our yes, our obedience. And sometimes we just need to hand over to him what we, what we are facing and watch him do what he does best. And it's not about just giving everything to God and just sitting back. God wants us to be involved in it. He wants us to be involved in the journey um, of what he does and the ways he performs his miracles. So God, I believe, wants us to be rooted in our identity in him. And he also wants us to be rooted in our dependency in him. And then he also wants us to be rooted um, in, in intimacy. Jesus, for me, is the best person to look at when it comes to examples of what it means to be intimate with the Father, to be close with the Father. Um, here's just a couple of passages um, about when Jesus prays. For example, in Luke 22, um, 39, this is when Jesus prays on the Mount of Olives. Jesus went out, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On the reaching place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew, he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When Jesus teaches in prayer, Matthew 6, verse 6, But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when Jesus he's about to walk on the water, Matthew 14, 22, after he had dismissed them, that's the disciples, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Late at the night, he was there alone. And when Jesus, he goes into the desert for 40 days, he's not going on a holiday, he's fasting, he's spending time with God. And it sets a challenge for us to um, what it means for us to be intimate and to be spending time with our Father, our King. Over the last few weeks, I've been on paternity leave and it's been really refreshing just to, to have some time off. Exhausting, <laughs> but so rewarding. Um, but, you know, normally um, I have a, a bit of a routine beforehand. I, before we had Romelia, where I'd, I'd wake up, I'd walk the dog, read the Bible and, and spend time with Jesus and, and, and then kind of crack on with work stuff. And um, when Romelia kind of came, um, that kind of routine went out the window. The kind of newborn arrives and um, it's just, you wake up and it's just full on. It's 5 p.m. before you know it. And it's it's difficult to kind of get time. Um, I found it's difficult to get time uh, alone with God. And there was one one day where um, we I had some time and I picked up my iPad and I just started looking at sheds because I'm I'm really into my garden at the moment. And um, I started to kind of question, actually, I've got some time here. Um, I should be spending time with, with Jesus. And so I put my iPad down. Um, I went upstairs uh, into my office. I shut the door and I spent time with Jesus. And um, I think sometimes we can make excuses or we can say that we're just too busy. We just don't have enough time. And this, the challenge is, if you haven't got enough time to spend with Jesus, then something's not right. Um, and I say that from a place of love and not condemnation, but our hearts should be set that we want to spend time with Jesus. And that means reading our Bibles, not just to gain knowledge, although reading the Bible does that, but it just means spending time with him, praying. If you journal, journal. Um, if it means just um, spending time in his presence, listening to what he says. Not just It's not just about reading the Bible and then popping it down and going on with your day. It's about reading the Bible, asking what God is saying to you and spending time with him, praying and seeking his will. And, and um, if that means just sticking on some worship and, and after you've read your Bible, then, then I'd encourage you to do that. 
I've had people say to me, Christians, not from this church, that um, you don't need to read your Bible every day. And I just, I just don't agree. I, I struggle with that because I think it's, if I was to go a day or days without speaking to Jess, I think there'd be something weird about that, not quite right about that. In the same way, we, we're, we're relational. We want to, we, God wants us to be in a relationship with him. And so spending time daily with him is so, so important in our walk with him. And he wants us to grow, wants us to put our roots down deep into him in an intimate way where we're spending time with him. I think there's more ways we can be rooted in him. But for me, those are the three areas I really wanted to cover today. Um, identity, um, dependency, and intimacy. Let me read you a passage from Colossians 2, 7. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth, <clears throat> excuse me, where you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. God is calling us to put our roots down into him in this new time, in this new season. And you know, it's, it's an ongoing process. Um, there's times, um, well, well, the t when we put the turf down, we don't just leave it. We had to water it. We have to maintain it. Even now, uh, we have to maintain it. And there's times where um, I'll go out and I'll see a weed just pop up in, in, the, in, the, in the grass and I have to pull it out um, because I don't, want, like, I don't want the grass and the turf to be full of weeds. In Hebrews 12, let me just read this passage to you. I think this is really important. Hebrews 12, 15. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. I think it's important to know that we want to put our roots down into Christ. We want to do the right thing, but to know that it's an ongoing process, to know that actually we need to keep being maintained. Paul months ago did a preach about the Holy Spirit being vital to, to our life. And um, it was titled Water is Life and how the way we maintain our lives is to be constantly filled with the Holy Spirit daily and to be maintained by making sure that weeds don't pop around in our lives, uh, that we must be so kind of on top of it and to recognize when stuff isn't quite right and to, and to address it. I think for me, this has been really important um, because I do, I keep saying it, I know, but I do think God wants to do a new thing in our lives personally, in, in, a, in a spiritual way. And that excites me. Um, and so this morning, I want us to respond. And as I was preparing and praying about this morning, um, I actually felt like I, I needed to give an opportunity for those that don't, um, that aren't Christians to give their lives, give their lives to, to Jesus. And um, yeah, it's not saying that I, that I just do flippantly. I really feel it's something that's on God's heart today. And uh, I feel maybe if you you might be watching this and um, you you kind of maybe you've watched kind of the last few sermons and you've been really drawn into the presence of God and you've kind of got questions still and there's still a lot of things you're not sure about, but you know that actually this Jesus guy that you've come to know is the person that you want to follow for the rest of your life then I want to encourage you, I'm going to pray in a minute, and uh, I'm going to encourage you just to echo in your hearts or out loud um, what, I, what I say. I'm going to lead you in a short prayer, and, um, and then I'm going to pass back over to uh, Mark and Abby. Um, so let's pray, and if you'd like to give your life to Jesus today, then I'm going to encourage you just to echo uh, what, I'm, what my prayer is. So Lord Jesus, thank you for who you are. Lord, I recognize that there are, th there are things in my life, there are roots in my life that aren't good. And I recognize the sacrifice that you made on that cross so that we could be cleansed, that we could be free in you. And Jesus, today I, I want to turn away from all those things that I've done wrong, the sins, the, the things that, that don't belong anywhere near you. And I want to repent. I want to turn to you. And I, today, I, I choose to follow you. Lord Jesus, will you be the king and saviour of my life? And I want to follow you wholeheartedly. Amen. Amen. So...
if I want to encourage you, if you've said that prayer, if you've given your life to Jesus, um, then please do get in contact with us. And I say that because um, we would love just to get in touch with you and to speak with you about what it means. Um, at the end of our service, our website address pops up and on our website, there's a contact us page. Get in touch with us. We'd love, we'd love to chat with you um and talk to you and if you have more questions this is a bit of a plug but we have an alpha coming up um uh which i'm excited about um ed and katie slingsby are going to be running it and um i would encourage you even if you have given your life to jesus day and you've got tons of questions uh then that's definitely something for you and you can find more details of that on um our website and for those that um of course, already Christians, I really think that this is an important time to respond, however however you might be feeling this morning. And I, and I recognize that although I'm saying it's time to lay the new turf, um, that actually for some of us that we might be in different stages of that, of that garden project from the time of the sting nettles being there to the point where the turf is looking great and it's, and it's looking good. And for some of us, it might be that we're still going through a phase of kind of getting the roots out, that we're, we're still just decluttering or it might be a time where you're, you're just you've literally put the roots down and you're 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 kind of learning more about Jesus uh, and digging into his word more and more or it could be that actually you know I was thinking this morning how you may lay the turf years ago and actually over time weeds have just kind of crept back into it and it's and it doesn't look so good and you realize today that actually there's stuff that you need to work on and so I'm going to pass back over to uh, Mark and Abby, and uh, they're going to lead us in a song called Christ is Enough. And wherever you are at, whatever position you might be feeling in this morning, I want to encourage you to really to make a response in this way, to say that Christ is enough in everything that we need. Uh, I want to put my roots down him uh, because he is so worth it. So may God bless you. Uh, let's sing together um, and uh, let's let's worship our King. all of my devotion Now there's nothing in this world that could ever satisfy Through every trial my soul will sing No turning back I've been set free Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. And everything I need is in you. Everything I need. Christ, my all in all. Joy my salvation and this hope will never fail as heaven is our home through every storm my soul will sing Jesus is here to God be the glory Enough for me, Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need, I have decided. No turning back, I have decided to follow Jesus.
no turning back, no turn. I've decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back. Turning back the cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back.